Give to Marshall Falk. Looks right. Cuts up the middle to the 40. He to the 30. Jerks away. He may score. Cuts back at the 15. The 10. The 5. In zone. Warner on play action. Stands in. Fires the slant. Marshall Falk's got it. Breaks the tackle. He's in the pool. At the 30. Got a block. 20. To the 10. 5. And he is got it. In. He didn't have the bulging biceps. He wasn't a workout fiend from the standpoint of, of lifting weights. And he didn't necessarily look the part. So many people would come up to me and said, you know, who's that sitting in Marshall Falk's locker? We all would just get smiles on our face and we're like, that's Marshall Falk. But inside of that exterior that maybe didn't look the part was the greatest football player that you would probably ever play with. There was not anything that he did that he didn't do well. That's what I think made Marshall Falk great. Everything he was gonna do, he was gonna do it the best. I remember a screen pass that we threw against the Minnesota Vikings. Marshall went 55 yards with it, eluding every single person on the Vikings team, if not once, maybe twice. Probably a 55-yard touchdown that covered about 130 yards. People just went wild. Over a 12-year career with the Colts and Rams, Marshall Falk became the only running back in NFL history to rush for more than 12,000 yards and have more than 6,000 yards receiving. When he retired, his 136 touchdowns were fourth on the all-time list. He's amazing. Wow. What else can Marshall Falk do for this football team? In 1999, the Rams won the Super Bowl, powered by Falk's then NFL record, 2,429 yards from scrimmage. Part of an offense known as the greatest show on turf. The greatest show on turf was three-fourths Marshall Falk. The thing about Marshall is you couldn't match up with him. We could split him out like a wide receiver, and he'd run routes like a wide receiver. You couldn't put a linebacker on him. If they wanted to put a DB on him, it gave us an advantage somewhere else. So strictly his versatility is what allowed us to separate ourselves from everyone else because he was on the field on every snap. Time after time after time, he got the ball in his hands and you're back there going, oh, look out. And before you could even get the look out out of your mouth, he was avoiding that guy and getting on to the next guy. It was like he was one step ahead of the defense every time he was out there. It was the crazy vision that he had, the ability to be able to see players that you wonder how he could ever see them. You know, they might be three yards behind him. We're all artists. When you're running the ball, basically that's what it is. There's a set place where the play is supposed to go. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. And then from there, it's what's inside of you. Just like every other artist, you know. He doesn't know why or for whatever reason what made him paint this picture. You can't explain that. You can't play by play that. You can't tell somebody what I just saw. Holy smokes. It's how you feel and what you think and what you see, what you trust. That's the only thing that I can think about running the football is like. He's phenomenal. It's, I've never been around a football player like this and, and probably never will in my career again. A lot of times I catch myself handing the ball off and instead of carrying out a fake, I turn around as quick as I can just so I can watch him. You just never know when he's going to do one of those things that you say, man, nobody else would have done that. Nobody else could have done that. Corner, throws, and the flag, the ball. He is the best receiving back I've ever seen. I mean, he makes big plays. What a move, 35. It seems to be effortless. His ability to shift and make guys miss, he stops as if to say, okay, you go by now, and I'll go when you go by. It's like he's a traffic cop or something like that. He directs traffic while the game is going on. We talk about, you know, the Randy Mosses and, and the Brett Favre and the Chris Carters, very talented football players, but I don't think none bring to the table what Marshall Falk brings to the table as a complete package. 
I don't know if there ever will be another Marshall Falk. He's incredible. When people talk about Marshall Falk, you get the sense he could leap tall buildings in a single bound. But not long ago, the word on the street was something Falk didn't care to hear. What's the most difficult problem that you've had to solve since you've been in the NFL? Um, when I was younger, um, my first couple of years, just outside expectations of people and what they have, you know, the perception that they have of you. They thought you were a prima donna? So. Yeah. Drafted second overall in 1994, he became an instant celebrity in Indianapolis. But it turned out no one liked Marshall more than Marshall himself. When I first came into the league, um, there was a lot of individual roles that I set, and that's the kind of person that I was. I always, you know, felt like I went out there and did my job, and that's all I had to do. Falk answered his own call and hit the NFL in full stride, gaining over 1,200 yards on the ground in his first season. Falk at the five, still driving down, and in touchdown! In the years to come, his numbers dropped due to injuries, but he remained the Colts' greatest asset and most aloof personality until one Sunday in 1998. In 1998, we were a young football team, and it was my fifth year. I don't think I've ever took the role as being a leader on the team. And, um, you know, it was kind of time for me to step up. His epiphany was too little, too late for the Colts, who shipped him to St. Louis after the season, where a fresh start helped motivate a player who had seen the light. Falk adapted his game to the Rams' pass-happy offense, and though his carries dropped by 20%, he became a more complete back, joining Roger Craig as the only other player to gain 1,000 yards rushing and receiving in the same season. We knew he was a real good football player, okay, but I didn't know he was as good as he is. I really didn't. And, and in fact, it took a while for me to be convinced he's as good as he is. For the Rams, Super Bowl 34 was the culmination of the greatest turnaround in NFL history. And the change was mirrored in the ultimate me player, who reached the ultimate stage as part of a team. And the following year, finally became a leader. In 2000, Falk scored more touchdowns in a single season than any other player in history, and carried the Rams to the playoffs en route to the league MVP. And he has now broken the NFL record for touchdowns in a season. That's his 26th.